Welcome to our continuing series, Questions and Answers for a World in Crisis. Today we continue with the Psychic Being, Part 3. From Sri Aurobindo. The psychic being is the soul form or soul personality developing through this evolution and passing from life to life till all is ready for the higher evolution beyond the ignorance. The psychic being is the soul, the purusha in the secret heart, supporting by its presence the action of the mind, life and body. The psychic being in the old systems was spoken of as the Purusha in the heart, the secret heart, which corresponds very well to what we define as the psychic being behind the heart center. It was also this that went out from the body at death and persisted, which again corresponds to our teaching that it is this which goes out and returns, linking new life to former life. Also, we say that the psychic is the divine portion within us. So too, the Purusha in the heart is described as Ishwara of the individual nature in some places. The word soul is very vaguely used in English as it often refers to the whole non-physical consciousness including even the vital with all its desires and passions. That is why the word psychic being has to be used so as to distinguish this divine portion from the instrumental parts of the nature. Spiritual individuality is rather a vague term and might be variously interpreted. I have written about the psychic being that the psychic is the soul or spark of the divine fire supporting the individual evolution on the earth and the psychic being is the soul consciousness developing itself or rather its manifestation from life to life with the mind, vital and body as its instruments until all is ready for the union with the divine. I don't know that I can add anything to that. The psychic being evolves so it is not immutable. The psychic being is especially the soul of the individual evolving in the manifestation, the individual prakriti, and taking part in the evolution. It is that spark of the divine fire that grows behind the mind, vital and physical, as the psychic being until it is able to transform the prakriti of ignorance into a prakriti of knowledge. These things are not in the Gita, but we cannot limit our knowledge by the points in the Gita. A distinction has to be made between the soul in its essence and the psychic being. Behind each and all, there is the soul, which is the spark of the divine. None could exist without that. But it is quite possible to have a vital and physical being supported by such soul essence, but without a clearly evolved psychic being behind it. 
There is indeed an inner being composed of the inner mental, inner vital, inner physical, but that is not the psychic being. The psychic is the inmost being of all and quite distinct from these. The word psychic is indeed used in English to indicate anything that is other or deeper than the external mind, life, and body, or it indicates sometimes anything occult or superphysical. But that is a use which brings confusion and error, and we have almost entirely to discard it. There is the divine spark from the beginning, the soul, in all things. But it takes a long time and a long evolution for it to arrive at a conscious expression and form of manifested being, what we call the psychic being. When the soul or spark of the divine fire begins to develop a psychic individuality, that psychic individuality is called the psychic being. The soul is always pure but the knowledge and force in it are involved and come out only as the psychic being evolves and grows stronger. The psychic being is the soul evolving in the course of birth and rebirth and the soul is a portion of the divine. But with the soul there is always the veiled divine. The psychic being is the developing soul consciousness manifested for the created being as it evolves. At first, soul is something essential behind the veil, not developed in front. The difference brackets between one psychic being and another is one of evolution. The psychic being is more developed in some, but the soul principle is the same in all. The soul and the psychic are the same, only as there is a vital being supported by the vital and expressing itself through it, so there is a growing psychic being supported on the psychic and expressing itself through the soul nature. As there is in us a mind which one does not see in form but is aware of, and as there is at the same time a mental being which one can see in form, so there is a soul and a psychic being. The soul is the same always. The psychic being is what it develops in the evolution. The soul is not limited by any form, but the psychic being puts out a form for its expression. Just as the mental, vital, and subtle physical purushas do, that is to say, one can see or another person can see one psychic being in such and such a form. But this seeing is of two kinds. There is the standing characteristic form taken by this being in this life, and there are, and there are symbolic forms, <clears throat> such as when one sees the psychic as a newborn child in the lap of the mother. If the sadak in question really saw his psychic in the form of a woman, it can only have been a constructed appearance expressing some quality 
or attitude of the psychic.